It's March and we're talking about courage. Here in Minnesota, I think March is a great month to talk about courage because only the most courageous plants dare to emerge from the cold, cold ground. The crocuses, the snowdrops, the creeping Charlie, which later in the summer is nothing but a weed to me. In March, when it emerges, I am so grateful for its boldness. I go out and rub it on my nose just to smell something green. And courage is like that. It is new life coming out of what's cold and frozen and seems unmovable. The word courage comes from the French word heart. And I think living with courage is living with heart. Each week we reflect on building our heart, on knowing our heart, and that is in part to give us courage, the courage of our own heart. There's a saying in 12-step groups, courage is fear that has said its prayers. And I like that because I believe that fear is really an essential part of courage. You know, when I think of courage, I have images that come to me. Ruby Bridges, this young child, this kindergartner, who in 1960 integrated the Little Rock school system, surrounded by giant men, preventing her from physical harm. That tiny child, those giant men, that terrifying school, and she walked with such young dignity. To me, that's an image of courage. Or I think of that young man whose name we don't know in Tiananmen Square in 1989, standing all by himself as a row of tanks prepared to roll over the dissenters, the protesters in Tiananmen Square. He stood there and he got rolled over. What courage, that tiny body, those giant tanks. Those are the images of courage that come up, but for most of us, that's not what courage looks like in our daily lives. So we're gonna take some time to really unpack that so that together we can examine and magnify our own courage. Years ago, a therapist suggested to me that self-esteem isn't something that's either high or low, that in fact there are discrete parts of self-esteem and that some people may have very high self-esteem in one area and low in another. Someone might have high self-esteem about their intellect and very low self-esteem about their ability to get along in gym class. Some people might have really great self-esteem about their emotional ability to get along with people and very low self-esteem about their ability to be in a sustained intimate relationship with one person. There are all kinds of self-esteem. And I think this is true also of courage, that there are different kinds of courage, that some people manifest different kinds of courage, that there's physical courage. You know, those people who run into burning buildings or who jump out of helicopters, whose physical courage is so inspiring. And some people have intellectual courage. They challenge what's been believed for years. They say, no, that's not true. Intellectually, I see it's different. The earth revolves around the sun or whatever intellectual knowing that they have, they have the courage to follow that where others don't. Some people have great emotional courage. They're the ones who are going to say, something feels weird in this room. I'm not sure what it is, but something's off. And everyone else goes, ah, do we have to talk about that? People have different kinds of courage. And the kind I think that we find the most compelling at least I do, is moral courage. The people who do something for the common good because of their morality, because their morality gives them the courage to speak, to act, to do. I believe that often moral courage is linked with physical courage and that that's what brings healing to our world. So with all of these kinds of courage, what makes something courage. It probably won't surprise you that I have three things that I think are essential in order for courage to exist. The first thing is fear. I alluded before that where there's fear, there's courage. Courage is fear that said its prayers, right? That you have to be afraid and do something anyway in order for it to be courageous. 
Now this is where I think the kinds of courage are really relevant. For instance, some survey taken long ago, which ministers love to quote, is that people are more afraid of public speaking than they are of death. Now, I don't even know if the survey exists, but ministers love it because we get to say, we're doing the bravest thing in the world by standing up here and preaching in front of you. And truthfully, the first time that I preached, it was incredibly brave for me. I would have done anything not to do it. I was literally afraid that I would throw up on the pulpit. I was so afraid. But by now, after all these years, ordinarily speaking to a crowd does not take a lot of courage for me. It's something I've done so many times that I'm, I'm not saying I don't get nervous, but I don't anymore get terrified unless I'm about to say something incredibly risky just incredibly risky. Most of the time, that's not courageous for me. Last year at General Assembly, the UUA had people rappelling off the side of a building in rope harnesses coming down the side of the building. And I was approached, would you like to do this? And I said, hold a gun to my head, I'm not doing that. That terrifies me. And while people were coming down and I was watching and cheering for them, I was standing next to a military chaplain who's been through army training who was saying, oh yeah, and this is so boring. There's no risk. I wouldn't do that because it's just so boring. If he had done that, that would not have been a courageous act for him. It would have been a routine act for him. And so courage requires feeling fear. And the second thing that courage requires is doing it anyway. I felt fear about rappelling down the wall, but I chose not to display courage in that case. I said, not on your life. If I had come down the wall, that would have been an act of courage. And so courage means that you do or say or act in some way despite the fear, that you go against the fear and you take action. Now it might be for a very few people standing in front of tanks in Tiananmen Square, but for all of us every day, there are choices. We make choices. Do I speak up about the racism in this room right now? Do I say something to somebody where they might be angry at me or go away from me? Do I say something that might risk my job if I'm concerned about something here and no one else is saying it? Do I challenge somebody in some kind of authority to me? Every day, people are evidencing courage by taking action when we're afraid. And the third thing that courage requires then is choice. So it's not a situational thing. Everybody who is X is courageous because of X. It's choices that are made. My mother, when she had terminal cancer, said she got so sick of people saying to her, oh, you're just so courageous. She said what they were really saying to her was, I'm glad I don't have terminal cancer and you seem to be standing there okay. She said, they don't know if I spend my life under my bed with terminal cancer, but she didn't. In fact, she displayed courage within that diagnosis by showing her big, beautiful, bald head by being clear and honest about what was going on, by refusing to go on with chemotherapy at the end and stopping eating and choosing her own terms of dying. She did display courage, but it wasn't because she had cancer. It's the choices she made with cancer. Each of us is born within and lives within situations where we may or may not choose to face our fears and act and do what we need to do. Particularly with moral courage, this is so essential for our time together. And what your courage looks like and what my courage looks like may be very different and somebody looking at us may not know how much courage it took for somebody tonight just to type their name in the chat bar who never came before whereas people who have come before, that's no big deal. Or for somebody to join us here when they're in a fundamentalist religious household that says you'll go to hell if you go there. We can't know the kinds of courage one another are displaying unless we choose to share it. And I believe that sharing acts of courage 
builds courage. And so this month, I can't wait to learn about how you are evidencing courage every day of your life. I'm so grateful always to be part of this community where part of our mission is building the courage to act. And so together, may we 